Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 117 of the I Rock Knits podcast. I am so excited to be here today. I have so much good stuff to show you. I got my walk in in the snow. I'm going to put a little bit of a video in here of me just walking home thinking it is hitting my face right now. We got more snow this week. We took a trip. We came home. Um, I knit a ton. I've got so many things to show you. So let's get started right away. I have some giveaway winners from last week and I thought I'd put them right up front again because it's easier to get in touch with people when they see them at the beginning of the podcast. So last week's prize from episode 116 was the favorite book and they're getting the little uh, case with the a uh, little holder tin it's so cute uh, and that is going to comment 66 and that is Chris Kristen Rossi so Kristen get in touch um, you won that and I will put it in the mail to you so um, congratulations and then the sock cow we have a couple weeks left for the sock cow so you can still join uh, the sock cal and um, join us but the number from Ravelry was number 19 and that's Polly 81 and Polly you knit three socks he knit a pair of socks every month for the knit along and it was Polly's idea to do the knit along so I'm super excited that Polly won some yarn and so Polly you are getting this skein of leading men fiber arts which is just beautiful. It's in the foliage colorway. It is fingering weight, um, so you can make another pair of socks. But yeah, it's really pretty. And then you are also getting some um, end protectors, um, little protectors to point protectors to stick on the end of your needles. So I put that in the mail to Polly. And then the commenter on Instagram, or the person who posted on Instagram, was Leslie. And that's Brookside Yarns. And Leslie, you are getting these two skeins of Stolen Stitches Nua by Carol Feller. There are two beautiful skeins of yarn here. And it's a sport weight, so you can make a color work hat, or you can make fingerless mitts or mittens, or a color work cowl, or a color blocked um, situation. And then you are also getting this little fox tape measure. Isn't that cute? It's a little fox curled up in a bunch of yarn. It's really nice. It's padded. So congratulations to Leslie um, for posting on Instagram and Polly as well. For commenting this week, if you want to comment on the podcast below, you will comment on whether or not you're a pet person and what kind of pets you have. So if we're getting a new puppy, as you all know, if you've been watching for the last 
two podcasts. Um, so we will go and pick up the puppy in two weeks. We'll be home um, on this Sunday in two weeks with our new puppy, Chevy. And so if you are a pet person, um, drop it in the box below. Maybe you had a pet as, as a child and you don't have a pet as an adult. But this is the bright colored yarn that I'm giving away today. This is Sun Valley Fibers called Silly Me. It is a um, orange, lime green, and purple skein. And then you're getting this knitwit keychain that you stick your little key in that I got when I was in Arizona. So that is the podcast prize for next week. If you are not a fan of fingering weight yarn, then maybe you don't want to um, comment next but week. I do need to tell you, so many of you got in touch with me um, that you thought you had won a prize. And a lot of the YouTube podcasters got um, these messages. What happened was YouTube kind of got hacked um, in the comments because the comments are public. So it's not as if their site got hacked, but people go into the comments and then they try to get you to sign up, hit a link, go to a certain app. And so many of you got messages saying, hey, you won a prize, click this link. And I'm so thankful that so many of you came over and asked me whether or not you won a prize. You did not win a prize if I did not name you on the last podcast, if it's not in the show notes down below, and if it's not in the Ravelry show notes. You have several places you can go to look to make sure that you won the prize. So if you do not hear me announce it on the podcast, so there were three winners this time, and last time there were three winners, then you didn't win a prize and don't click a link. Don't get scammed. They're getting really good. Never click anything in your email that is unrecognizable to you. Um, and don't click and open an app. So I hope that none of you went and opened the app that they wanted you to open in order to, um, you know, get your prize from me. Because I would never just send you a random notification that you won a prize that I hadn't announced on the podcast. And I heard that this happened to a bunch of podcasters. And so I just want to put that out there that unless you heard it on the podcast or see your name and like which comment number I, I chose from my random number generator on the podcast, it's a scam, okay? And they're doing it on Instagram as well. Everybody who is giving away prizes, um, people who are having contests on Instagram, those um, people are also getting um, messages from people saying, hey, you won and you know, you have to pay a certain amount to get your prize. That is not the case here, okay? Is anybody else just gravely affected? I feel like I look so tired by the time change. We sprang forward one hour, and I don't know why it affects me so badly. It'll take me about two weeks in the fall and the spring to adjust. We were talking about it at Knitting Group and one of the gals is like, does it bother anybody? And she's like, it doesn't bother me in the least. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I could not fall asleep last night. I saw the clock at 3.30. I was still awake. I tried to go to bed a little bit earlier, not a lot earlier, but a little bit earlier because I knew we'd lose, you know, that hour of sleep. And then I went for my walk and I came home and I sat in the chair and I just couldn't get the energy to podcast. I just feel a little peaked. I don't know. I don't feel like I'm coming down with anything, but I was hot in the night and thirsty in the night. And anyway, is anybody else negatively affected by the time change? I'm hoping that in the fall, we go ahead and don't change clocks anymore because that would be that would be great by me. What am I wearing today? This is my Bada Bing Pontini. This is a variegated yarn that did this. I, I did not do that. <laughs> That's just variegated yarn and um, a solid colored yarn. I think I used Malabrigo on both of these. This is like a two by two corrugated ribbing and then you do increases going out. I know that these shrugs are super popular right now with the Saturday shrug and the Sunday shrug, shrug um, by Jackie of the Caddy Jacks Knits podcast. So I thought, well, I will put on my shrug um, today. Uh, I did have a couple of people make these larger on Ravelry into more of a poncho. Um, and so they, they have notes there. Two gals made this a little bit like a, of a bigger overflowing. This is not snug to my shoulders, but you know, it hugs my shoulders a little bit. 
and um, kind of fun to wear in these colors. This red and black and purple and orange has a tiny little bit of blue in it, so it does really pop. And then it goes just to my elbows. You could make it shorter like a cowl. Lots of options for you to. Once again this week I have my iPod switch. I do think it worked better for me last week to look over he right over here than to have my camera over there. That's what I, I was in the habit of doing. So I'm trying it again to make sure that I'm trying to look more at where the tiny little dot on the edge of the iPad is. At the beginning of the podcast this week, you would have seen five featured patterns. And I am featuring five of my designs at the beginning of every podcast. But there's a whole bunch this week because they were sets. So the first one is the Cahoots sweater. The second set is the Chim Chimney hat and the DK weight socks and fingering weight socks. You can also buy that as a set of two, just the two socks and DK and fingering, or the whole thing as a set of three. So I have a coupon code for all of you on that. And then the choose your own path hat, mitts, and cowl. You can buy those individually. That is where I teach my Latvian braid class. So when I'm teaching Latvian braids, I use that pattern. Um, but you can knit that pattern without the Latvian braids and it's got a little bit of corrugated ribbing and it's got those really fun, um, that textured stitch pattern in it that's super easy to do. So I would highly recommend that and you can buy that as a set. So if you go over from here on out every week, the five patterns that I've featured and I just picked, you know, the, the two sets and the one pattern this week to try to get them all in. Um, then you can use code FEATURE, F-E-A-T-U-R-E, -E, and you can get each set for $6 and you can get the pattern for $6. So if you go in and use the code FEATURE, you'll get a discount. I have upped all my prices on all of my patterns on Ravelry. I talked about that a little bit. Um, you know, I've been designing since 2015. I had my first pattern go out, so it's been eight years and I'd never changed my prices. I was still selling things for five and six dollars. And I just can't justify it. I put, you know, 40 to 60 hours of work go into a pattern, and then I hire photography and try to do a professional job. I pay a tech editor. I have test knitters who are wonderful, um, helping me to make sure that my patterns are accurate. I give pattern support. <laughs> I get, I do quite a bit of pattern support for free. And so I just really need to, I need to top my prices. So my husband said, well, what are you pricing that? And I said, well, I went to seven and $8. <laughs> and so some of my patterns, a few of my patterns were $7, but I just upped everything. So all my patterns are seven, all of my sweaters are eight and all of my sets are 10. So you can really get a discount if you go in and buy the set. You'll get two, three, sometimes four patterns for the $10 price because I added an, a cowl or added a hat to a set um, kind of at the last minute, like that Up North Cabin set. You get four patterns for the $10, but like the Taco Tuesday set, the Dog Word set, um, the Chim Chimney, the Choose Your Own Path, the Betweenity that I featured last time. Those sets are all $10 and that is a significant discount because you usually get two or three, most, most of the time, three patterns in those sets. And you can and go over and get those. So yeah, wearing the bada bing and trying to, to smile and not, <laughs> and not be tired today. I was just so sleepy this morning. Yeah, Ross came home with the groceries and I was already working on the computer this morning. And, and he said, what are you doing in there? And I said, about falling asleep. I just got up and I'm I said it was such a long night. I just could not fall asleep. It does not happen very often. My shoulder really hurt and my hip really hurt. And I'll tell a little bit more about that in Corey's stories. All right, let's do the sweater of the week this week. This is a new one. Um, I have only wore it once. This is the Abrian sweater by Isabel Kramer. I knit it in brown sheep yarn in the sport weight. It is a typical... Uh, Isabel Kramer pattern, you know what her um, patterns look like. They're very well written and they're of usually a fairly simple design. So it's textured on the front and the back and then the sleeves are solid. It has a raglan shaping. It was in sport rate, which is 20 stitches and 28 rows to four inches on a size six and seven needle. 
Um, Abrin is a lovely sweater with an easy pattern that gives a pretty nubby texture. You won't need much time to get into the pattern, I swear. Anyway, the instructions are given word by word to lead you through the yoke increases in pattern. First, the yoke is worked back and forth to the final neck cast on, then in the round to sleeve separation. Sleeve stitches are placed on hold. So it's a typical construction. The sizes go from 34.5 to 50 inch bust. And uh, like I said, I used my brown sheep sport weight yarn. And this yarn was barber pulled, red and orange. And I was shocked at how red the sweater turned out instead of, I mean, it kind of looks orange on the screen, but in real life, I think it reads more red. It just toned down the highly barber pulled part of this yarn. I don't know if I kept, I'll try to put a picture in of the skein in the, in the skein because it was very, not variegated, but just two yarns twisted together. But it turned out great. It, it really just mellowed everything out. Um, it's a basic sweatshirt construction. This one came out in March of 2015, so it has been out there for a while. Um, but I was just looking for something like a top-down raglan, super simple, use up the yarn, but have some texture. Have something that you can do during, so it wasn't just stuck in it the whole time because I am not a fan of knitting miles of stuck in it. I know some people love that, and I get so incredibly bored <laughs> by miles of stuck in it. Okay, let's do the shawl of the week. On the other mannequin this week is an old pattern, but a, just a goodie. This is the Gills Rock Shawl by Paula Emmons Feasley, who passed away from cancer a couple of years ago in the winter months. Um, but her patterns are still up. She did a collaboration with Quince and Company for this. And when I was looking through to see what patterns I haven't shared with you, you know, we've gone through <laughs> 117 shawls and sweaters. You know, not every podcast had a shawl and a sweater, but because we've done socks and we've done felted projects and um, yeah. So, but I've gone through a ton and this one came up that I had never talked about it. And it's just a little one skein shawl. It's got a beautiful little textured stitch. I'll take it down and show it to you. I just looked out the window and it's snowing again. It has stopped. It was hit me in the face when I was walking and now it's snowing again. It's not sticking to the roads, but it is adding to our giant, our giant piles. Look at that lovely little stitch pattern in there. Isn't that nice? Gills Rock is a triangular shawl with long tails that can be wrapped or tied. It is worked from the top down in plain stockinette stitch that changes to a simple texture pattern with slightly wavy ribs. The reverse side of the shawlette is an attractive basket weave pattern, the wearing the shawl with a point in the front and wrapping the long ends around your neck. The Harbor Gills Rock is one of our favorite places in Door County, Wisconsin. We enjoy standing on the dock to watch the sunset, the ripples on the water, the cries of the seagulls, and the ever-changing colors of the sky at sunset are elements of perfect moments. The size of the shawlette can also be altered by using heavier weight yarn or simply continuing the texture pattern, as I said, and then beginning the border. Wow, I miss her. She had the most amazing podcast. She was one of the first audio podcasts I ever listened to. And I would walk and listen to Paula and she would talk about nature and being outside. And it, it, it was just the most amazing. This is just such a lovely memory of a beautiful woman who had an amazing uh, retreat in Illinois after her town had a tornado. She invited everyone to come to town to kind of replenish the businesses and get people back in town and we drove down. I, I went to that retreat a couple of different times. It's just a really lovely, lovely memory. My Chelsea Chunky Cabled Hat and Cowl Pattern went live last weekend and thank you for so many of you uh, that went over and opened the newsletter <laughs> because I get a report on how many people actually opened my newsletter and how many people just delete it. <laughs> so 
So it was lovely to see when people actually opened my newsletter that I spend hours making because I'm not great at this whole program that I use. And now their prices just went up. They were, they had a free component and now I have too many subscribers. If you have over a thousand subscribers, they're going to make you pay a monthly fee and it's $40 a month. And that's the only place I know I've collected all these emails and that's the only place I know how to make my newsletter and get it sent out. And now they're going to charge me. Oh, anyway. So thank you for opening my newsletter, even if you don't want to buy it <laughs> by the pattern. But for those of you that didn't um, get the pattern or didn't um, purchase that at that big discount, I'm going to give all the podcast viewers a an additional um, two weeks to purchase that at a, co a coupon code. So if you use the code podcast, you can get the set for just $5. The, the hat and the cowl um, for, for $5, it, especially I would love it if some of you could go over and support Chelsea Yarns and buy her chunky yarn. Her chunky yarns are beautiful to work with. I mean, glorious. So pretty. She took pictures um, when I sent her the samples. Um, and so she took pictures outside and I said, she didn't really want to. And I said, Christina, you're so beautiful. <laughs> and I think I embarrassed her, but she went outside with Tad and they took pictures and they turned out just lovely. So I put them up on the pattern page. So if you would like to still get the Chelsea cowl or hat or the set, the both of them, then go over and, and take a look at those. They did get um, up to the front page on Ravelry, which was lovely. Um, not quite all the way up to the top, but it's always nice when you can boost them to the front. And the way that you can help with doing that is to put the pattern in your queue on Ravelry, to favorite on Ravelry, or to click on it on Ravelry, even if you have no plans to buy it or ever make it. Clicking on a designer's new designs helps them move up to the front page where lots more people can see design from someone that they may never have known. I feel like now I'm getting nasally. <laughs> so maybe I'm getting a cold. That might be why I feel like my eyelids are swollen and I'm looking so peaked today. I'm trying to keep my, ener my energy up, but... Okay, so I did get... Um, the Chelsea Chunky Cable car Cowl and Hat. My new pattern that will be going out this week is the Knitwear Sachets. And those are the sachets I made the little pillows that say knit pearl yarn on them. But then I had Tuster's knit 11 different charts. So we have sh Baby Sleeping, Asleep, Baby Asleep. We have Tooth Fairy. We have um, Knit On. We have Knit Bestie. We have Knit Traverted, we have Yarn Hoarder. Um, I have a ton, there are 11 charts that come in that pattern and that will be going live, I'm hoping on Tuesday. So when this this podcast is live, there sh you should have a newsletter either Tuesday or Wednesday um, with that new pattern out, as long as everything goes well around here. Um, and then you can also have me make a chart for you. So if you have a new baby and you want to put their name on the chart or you have a phrase someone asked me to do quilt so read knit so quilt knit so quilt I think and so I did that chart that's in the pattern but if you want me to chart something for you it's a cost of eight dollars and I will make the chart and I will email it to you so that you do not have to draw it However, at the back of the pattern, I put a blank piece of charting paper and an alphabet. So if you want to map out your own and center it your own, it's just that I have charting software that I've learned how to use and I enjoy making charts and they're not too difficult. They, you know, they take me a little bit of time, but it's not too hard for me to do, especially to get stuff centered. If you're going to do more like I did um, knit on with confidence and hope and that, you know, getting that centered, you want to get it um, is a little more challenging. But anyway, so I thought I'd put that out there because that new pattern is coming out and there will be a coupon code in the newsletter. So if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, go over to irockknits.com and sign up and you get a free pattern when you put your first name and your email in. And I only send newsletters when I have a new pattern release. And then I finished the bear hoods and oh my gosh, you guys are not going to believe it. 
So what's off my needles? What did I finish this week? Okay, the original one was this one. And it turned out too big. It's a little too deep. But Joanna, my model, has a big head and a lot of hair. And so if she were going to wear a ponytail, she said this would have been fine. If she'd had a ponytail in, then this one would have been fine. But I thought it was a little too big. So I sized it down because that was the prototype. And this one was the next one I went and worked on. And I used Webs. I went to Webs, America's Yarn Store. <laughs> Um, I'm, and I'm not sponsored, but I purchased their Haydenville Bulky, and it is lovely. And it has this little peak in the front that tucks down into the front of your coat. And then this is the adult version with the gray yarn around the hood and across the bottom of the neck. And you just, this is Sirdar Alpine Fur Yarn. So this is the adult one. And we took pictures, and I talked about that. And then I decided everything's better when it's tiny. And so I did a little kid size. This is the baby to three. <laughs> and then this is our two. And this is three to like eight. Um, and it's really easy to make the hood taller or wider. You do a couple of decreases right here um, so that the fur doesn't stick too far, far, far forward. But if you wanted it to be deeper, you could just eliminate those. And then, yes, you can do it in stockinette or in garter. If you want to just knit the, because I know some people hate to purl. <laughs> so if you just want to knit the hood, you can do that in just garter. This one, I folded in on the back. I just pushed my little tip in and I tacked that down so that the point wouldn't be quite so pointy right there. And the other one I pushed way in and, and tacked it on a diagonal so that you didn't have quite that. You do do two decreases at the back of this. Um, and you can seam this with Kitchener Stitch or Three Needle Bind Off. I tried to make it as easy as possible. So my testers, I've got two, three testers that are finished. And so this should come out in the next week or so. I've decided to go ahead and put it out. I had a number of people say that they like to knit Christmas gifts all year round. And a lot of people knit Christmas in July. And now there's a huge couple of huge knit alongs for that. And so I will release the pattern now and then I will put it out there again in the fall kind of as a re-release with the coupon code maybe or something to try to get people who haven't seen it or haven't you know, purchased it to, to remember that I did it in the spring. So yeah, I should try to show you. Okay, here's the, the large and then the medium and then the small. Yeah, there you go. They turned out so cute and really fun to knit and super quick. I did have someone use kind of a boucle yarn around here and then someone asked if they could use mohair I'm not sure that the mohair would work so well. You'd have to use a bunch of strands of it and then also maybe hold it with a piece of yarn to kind of get the bulk of this because this is a very bulky fur and I just don't think it looks as plush. This is the softest fur and I think I bought it for maybe $7.99 and I got two hoods and have leftovers. So it's it this... The, the yarn too was very inexpensive and super soft. So I, I know that I could buy the, the yarn for like 20, the yarn and the fur for like $20 and still make the biggest one, two skeins um, of the regular yarn and one skein of the fur. So that will also be coming out shortly. Um, yeah, the hat, the cowl, the knit word sachet, and then the hood, which is just lovely. And then, what am I designing next? I've been working on my five new blankets. So I have five blanket patterns coming. I have sample knitters knitting them. I've reached out to Knit Picks and their independent designer program to see if they are interested in sponsoring those patterns um, in any way because I did use Knit Picks yarn and I haven't heard back they don't have a great turnaround. They say five to six weeks. And the patterns are going to be done, so I may just put them out myself. I'll have to see. 
But anyway, <laughs> now the most exciting part of the show. <laughs> I'm so excited to show you these. Oh, you guys, I finished Sven and Solve. <laughs> oh, her scarf is pushed up. I made her braids last night. Oh my gosh. Look at these cutie patooties. I do not love knitting toys, but I do find them really satisfying and, you know, a little bit challenging so that you feel really accomplished. So let me tell you about these. I bought these kits from Barrett Wool. I'm not sure why I bought the kits. They were very expensive. And I have a ton of yarn left over, so I will talk about that. But you start with their heads, and their heads are very tall to keep their hats on. And Susan B. Anderson did a bunch of notes on the Barrett Wool website on her blog, and I printed her notes out, and she did the heads much shorter. But I did understand the concept of why you would make the heads so tall. And so I did them as written. Now, looking back, I would not do that again. But at the time, I decided. And then you're working your way down. And then you pick up stitches around the neck. And you change colors of yarn. And then you do uh, yoke. They give you two or three different yokes. This ended up being kind of a longer yoke. It could have been. I could have picked a shorter one because the arms are down a little far. But you know, unless I point it out, who's going to care? Then you get down here and then you flip up the collar, the, the hem, and you pick up there and you knit her little skirt. And then you flip up this and you pick up and you knit their little legs. And then her leggings are striped, which now in hindsight, <laughs> extra ends to weave in. They showed it as striped. And so I thought, well, I'll do it as striped, but it doesn't show up too much as stripes from a distance and it was extra ends. Then you do the cuff of their sock and their sock and then you do the boot and you're just picking up again or changing colors of yarn. If I had to do it again, I wouldn't do the cuff of the sock in a different color because it was just, you know, four more ends to weave in. It, it just got to be a lot of color work, which I love knitting the color work um, and I don't mind weaving in ends, but this could have just been a quicker project. So the hats have fair isle motifs in the pattern and you get to choose which fair isle motifs you want to do. And I think there are four, but the hats that I saw, some of them were very short, but the hats that Susan did were longer. And so I kind of copied her motifs. But if you'll remember, I didn't have green in my kit. And so then I had to contact them and then they sent me a giant skein of green. Um, and so I had to put this on hold and wait. And so I did make their two hats match. His is a tiny bit bigger because he's a little bigger guy. But if you put them side by side, the hats do um, line up. I just didn't decrease his down as quickly. And I would not do that again. I would use fewer colors and do fewer motifs that were just longer because again, tons of yarn ends to weave in. Now, if you're not going to play with these hard, could you just tie them off and tuck them on the inside of the hat? Absolutely. But someday I might have grandchildren that come to the house that play with these. And so I was thinking, well, I better make sure that I weave in all those ends. So I did. Now for him, you do the same thing. You're working down. They tell you where to put the eyes. They tell you how to take that increases that you did right there and take your yarn and cinch up the nose. And then you get, I got a kit. So I got this fleece, extra roving um, little pieces of, well, it's like actually just sheep. <laughs> um, and then I did his, and then you do these little mittens at the end of their hands. They are meant to be mittens, and they do put a little increase for a thumb. Um, you do knit front back, knit front back into the same stitch. Um, but Susan said, leave off the thumb, so I did. <laughs> and then I did his pants all the way down. I got really good. By the time you do four boots, you're really good at the boots. You understand what the boot concept is. So I picked these back up a week ago on Tuesday. My pattern came out 
I didn't have podcast week. I had knit a lot on these in January and then I thought, I just wanna bang them out. I can get them done in a couple days. And no, you cannot get them done in a couple days. I had to finish the hat. And then when I got toward the bottom, I had two boots on him and two mittens, his beard, her hair, and her scarf, her mittens, and her boots. So tiny little bits left, right? We left to drive to South Dakota, which is a four hour drive. And I, I knit all the way down. I knit while I was there and I knit all the way back and I finally got them done. So it was another eight hours of knitting to finish up um, her mittens, her little scarf, which is super long. <laughs> it took, you know, it's six stitches of garter, but then you have to put fringe on the bottom and then you have to cut hundreds of lengths, not hundreds, I'm exaggerating, but hundreds and thousands of lengths of yellow yarn. And then you stitch it into the back of her head. And then I, every time I stitched a piece into the center, I crossed it over. So even if a kid pulled on a strand of this yarn, it wouldn't pull out because I crossed every one over itself. I'd string it through and then I'd cross it over and then I'd string. And then I, sometimes I started stringing two strands through and I just did that. I've stitched their hats on. I decided, you know what? I do not want their hats coming off and on all the time. So I just did a running stitch and I could pull it out because there's just a little piece tucked up in there. Um, so I can't show you how I did her hair, but I had tons of yarn all the way from about here all the way back down to about here where I stranded and cut, stranded and cut, stranded and cut. And I cut really long pieces and then I braided. And so I think I could have made her braids go to about here, but I cut those pieces darn it. And so I said, I counted and I had 11 braids and I could get 11 on each side because I did in person. And then I just chopped off the bottom, but they could be much shorter. I think it's cute, but you know. I'm really happy I made them because I paid, you know, $90 for that darn kit. Um, and then you just stitch on a little mouth on her, just very simply, just go in and out. And I did that about four times and I still don't think she really has a cute smirk, but you know. So they're gonna sit back here with my other little stuffies, my little gnomes and um, my little el um, gnomes and elves and my little, <laughs> llama alpaca guy anyway so one is sven and one is solve so here's the scoop i have this much yarn left over so i could make two more dolls am i going to make two more dolls no um the only yarn that i feel like was getting down there a little bit was the yellow and she can have short hair and she could have much shorter braids, but the rest, all, all this, you have way more green than you need because I got that extra skein. Um, and so you could change up the colors of, of their hats. If I was gonna do it again, I might even stripe their hats and make their hats shorter. So I'm gonna put this in my D stash on Ravelry and I'll include the printed off notes. And then there is a few pieces of beard left, but not a ton of beard left in this little pouch that they send you. There is a string of blue yarn for their eyes in here. I mean, it is just, there's so much yarn. And the yarn is lovely, but I own a bunch of brown sheep, you know, fingering and sport weight yarns that is like a wooly wool, that this will just sit at my house. And these are the perfect colors to follow the kit and have the pattern. So I'm gonna put that in my D stash. If anybody wants to make Sven and Solve, I will say they were really fun to make. You have to make a pom-pom and you have to make a tassel. Um, uh, yeah, they turned out super cute. I think they're very fun. Um, and you know who would have loved them? I was telling my mom and dad this weekend. Mom said, why would you have ever bought that kit? And I said, you know what? I think I bought them because May would have liked them. May was Finnish. She loved the Scandinavian um, people and their customs and all of that. And I think probably I might have even thought that I would knit them for her. And so I said that to Ross and he said, you're right. May would have loved those. 
And so if she were still alive, I probably would knit another set. You do need stuffing, quite a bit of stuffing that did not come with the kit. Um, you know, you stuff everything as you go, except the mittens. You don't really stuff the mittens. Um, you just kind of close them up and they're, they're more flat. I did have, I did move a little bit of that down and I was adjusting and squeezing and as her shoulders seemed a little wide, but then that made her, you know, you can adjust them now. <laughs> I should quit talking about them. <laughs> but literally this is such a huge part of my knitting <laughs> this week, getting these two done for the podcast. I'm just like, oh, I have to get them done. I have to get them done. And I, yeah, they turned out just super cute. So Sven and Solve I was so excited to show you all that. What came in the mail this week? Oh, well, look at this. I have their little original kit picture. So this is the picture that I used to kind of follow Susan B. Anderson's notes. And you can see her faces are smaller. And this was the Barrett Wool kit. And this is her two um, original. So yeah, this is, uh, I am using this as a place saver in the book that I ordered. So I ordered this book, I saw it on Instagram. It is called Coming Home and it is 10 years of old maiden aunt yarns. And I am still reading the story at the beginning of this woman who um, dyed yarn and then they had different, um, designers, very, very well-known designers. So Isolde Teague, Anna Maltz, Kirsten Kapoor, Felicity Ford, Bristol Ivy, Rachel Coopy, Claire Parks. I mean, that's a, and so I thought, wow, she had all these people write patterns using her yarn so that she could um, have a little book put together. So this came out in 2017 and she only has some copies left, not a whole bunch left. And so I decided I would order the book. And the story at the beginning about her um, family living in Canada, but her mother being from Scotland and going back to Scotland every year, and then her eventually going back to Scotland is lovely. I'm only that far in, but I've been reading the story at the beginning, which is 13 pages. And then there is, um, the patterns are... A shawl, a hat, a shawl, mitts, a cowl, socks, um, a notions pouch, and some rhubarb tea cake. So, um, yeah, there are different items in here. One is a little sewn, belted notions pouch, and then socks, a shawl. Yeah, so it's just a very small little book. It did have to be shipped overseas. Um, I don't remember what I paid. This is um, 18 pounds sterling. Um, so I don't remember what I paid, but it's a lovely little book called Coming Home. I, I'll show you one of the patterns so you can get an idea. Here is the St. Andrew's shawl. It's really pretty. And then the mitts on the front are color work. So yeah, it was a lovely little book, came in the mail. And I started reading it, and yeah, so I thought I should share that. So I was asked if I would share some tips on how to wear shawls. And I do that quite a bit in my Fifty Shades of Shawls class. I do a lot of styling and figuring out how to kind of wear a shawl in different ways, different and unique ways, different closures and different things. But I had my pressed flower shawl out this week, and it is a huge shawl. So I am going to insert a video um, about how to wear that. Um, it is not going to go with what I have on, so I might have to figure that out. But I will insert a little video here of how to wrap the shawl, but also tuck it up and have the tail come out the front. <laughs> Show, pretty lady, try it on you. By my show, spun in magic, wishes come true.
be um, a kind of a different way to wear the shawl. What okay. have I been watching? Oh my gosh, you guys, because I was knitting all week, I watched a lot of late night TV. <laughs> I was working on some other things too, but um, I watched that new show that came out, I think on Netflix called You. It is weird, so weird. He is a stalker and he stalks the girl. There are two seasons, so obviously it got picked up for a second season. He follows her around, then they become a couple and then she's weird. She has weird stuff going on. It was not a thriller, wasn't really suspense, it was intense and scary, but he's narrating the story. And so you, it's kind of overlaid. It was, yeah, really weird, very interesting. Let me know if anybody else watched it. Then I watched White Lotus. I had watched one episode, thought it wasn't for me, thought I'd better watch it because the whole world has been talking about it. I didn't think it was great. Um, it's two seasons, um, you know, people go to a hotel and stay and then it's all the different characters and how they're interacting and what's going on. I found some of the dumb, the dumb humor to be really off-putting. Um, I can see how some people would like it because it's kind of some of that comedy, but then the the characters are um, a little sad. <laughs> they don't have great lives, some of them. I don't know, D I didn't love it, but watch two seasons. Then I started watching Next in Fashion. So good, Tan France and uh, Gigi Haddad. I had watched the first season. It got better, they're doing a better job. Production got a little better. Some of the designers aren't great. I know they don't give them much time to design things, but I sewed as a child and there are some times when I think my finishing could have, could have would be better. And these people are supposed to be professionals. I know they're in a hurry, I know they're stressed out, they're trying to make something really creative, but it always comes down to the wire and some of their finishing is just crud. But I really enjoyed it. The, the top people are quite good and that was very fun to watch. And then they have a fashion show and they pick a winner and the winner wins $200,000 and they were nice to each other, which I appreciate, right? They helped each other out. They were kind to one another. It wasn't catty. It wasn't, you know, a lot of backstabbing and stuff that they try to get some reality TV to do. Then I started watching Daisy Jones and the Six and that was a book that I read, which that was the book that I thought was based on a true story and that this band was actually a real band and that there was music on YouTube and that the band had been as big as the Beatles and how did I miss it in the era that I was growing up <laughs> and then it wasn't. But that's coming out like two episodes every week or two and so now I'm, I'm in, I'm four or six episodes in and I am enjoying um, watching it, it's it's good. It's a story of, about a rock and roll band back in, you know, the 70s. And I thought I would watch a few of the Academy Award winners because the Academy Awards are on tonight. And so I watched that show, Women Talking. Boy, is that hard. That was sad and difficult, but well, very well done. So that's about a Mennonite community in Bolivia. I think Bolivia or Bavaria. No, that, those are way far apart. Bolivia, I think. No. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, their men are overbearing, demanding, abusers. They drug the women and rape them. And they wake up after being drugged and they've been raped. And um, the authorities are somehow come and arrest the women. This is based on a true story. They arrest the men, sorry. They arrest the men and take them to town. So the rest of the men that didn't get arrested or some one of the men or several of the men go to town to try to get them out. So the women and children are left home alone and the women have to decide if they're going to stay. And they they think if they leave, they won't go to heaven. And they will they will not be seen in the eyes of God. You know, they it's all they've all been kind of indoctrinated and um and so there are eight women who are kind of the leaders of the women 
who meet in the hayloft of the barn. So the whole thing pretty much takes place in this dark hayloft of this barn while the men are away and they're trying to decide if they're going to all leave. And it was heartbreaking. Um, one of the women has been very physically abused and they all know about it. And they were not able or capable or willing to help her and her daughters also being abused by their drunken husband. Um, and now, and the boys are the only ones educated. The women have no educated, have, have no schooling. Um, they cannot read or write. And the boys are being educated and the boys are being brought up to be just like their fathers. And so if they don't take the young boys away, they're all going to, it's just going to perpetuate, right? Wow. Really intense. Uh, yeah. This is a very hard, very interesting. And then I had to watch season three of All Creatures Great and Small on PBS to watch something lovely and light and just exceptional. <laughs> So I did a PBS Masterpiece. I did a subscription for $5.99 a while back, and now I just want to support them. Um, so I, I watched it via Amazon Prime subscriptions. And that whole season was lovely. So I did end up watching a ton of TV in the last two weeks <laughs> since we were together last. A couple of things I saw on the internet this week. Here's a quote that someone put up in one of those Instagram stories. Did you have a hard day or did you have a hard five minutes that you milked all day? Wow. Have any of us ever gotten up in the morning and had a bad experience, right? Like my husband this morning broke a glass on the kitchen counter. He just set it down and it broke. And I was in the office and I said, what happened? He said, I broke my glass, but it went into the eggs. It, it He thought like he was making the eggs for breakfast and He's like, it might've gone in the eggs. I got to make new eggs, right? And it, it was all over. He had to vacuum. He had to wipe the counters, you know, little shards of glass. It mostly was big pieces, but he, you never know. And he could go about his day being like, I had the worst start to my day this morning, but that's not who he is. You know, he could have just kind of been like, well, that stunk. And then something else happens that's not the way you want it to go. And you kind of just have that bad experience kind of oversee your entire day instead of kind of just saying, okay, one bad thing happened and now I'm going to move on. So I, I thought that quote was really good. Did you have a, a five minute really hard conversation that you then thought about all day long or a small task that you had to do, but then you moped about the fact that you had to do this thing? Gosh, I just thought that was so good I thought oh how many times have I you know kind of let that happen to me my gluten-free journey I have two gluten-free items to talk to you about today very hard to find in Minnesota Udi's double chocolate muffins four pack delicious freeze them put put one in the microwave so good such a treat they're small they're they're not those giant muffins. They're, I mean, they're like a cupcake size tin kind of, and you get four in a pack. They're not cheap. But if I really want a treat and I want it to be gluten-free, that's what I would go for. And then, and then the Snyder's Honey Mustard Pretzels, gluten-free pretzels are not all great. They can be kind of tough and overly crunchy, um, but the Honey Mustard really good. I'm not a salt over a sweet person and I do like those quite a bit. Special things that I have to tell you. Thank you to Connie for reminding me that it's called tnickling. That's what the two things are where you go one, two, one, two, and the people hop in and out. And I found a video and on YouTube. And so I'm going to try to put it in here so that you all know what the heck I'm talking about. But if you grow, grew up in the 60s and early 70s, which is not very many of you probably because I'm getting older, not as old as some of you I know, but you know, it's a, I think as a certain age of, of kid who in PE class did to nickling and it's um, a cus customary dance and I found videos of it online. It was so fun. We, we used to do it and you would jump in and out. People who were really good at it got to be 
got to do it more because otherwise the rest of us, our ankles would get clanked all the time, right? Because you're when you bring the sticks together, if your feet are in between there, they're kind of like long bamboo poles and they would cross. You'd have two going horizontally and two vertically. To nickeling, that's what it was called. So thank you to Connie. So the dance actually is a Filipino dance. There's a story about how it originated and it involved um, the birds called the tickling birds, which is where it got its name. And basically the story goes that there was a lazy kid who was having to keep the tickling birds out of the farms from eating up the crops. And so what he did is he started clapping two bamboo sticks together. But what happened was the birds just kind of danced through the sticks. And so then his family didn't believe him that the birds were, you know, maneuvering through the sticks and eating the crops anyway. So he showed them what the birds were doing. And then that kind of was how Tinickling was created, was he imitated the tickling birds' movements, and then it became dead. And then I put a bunch more of my stash on deep, my D-stash page. I was organizing way up there, trying to find a couple of skeins of yarn, and... Um, I am offering some of my yarns to my sample knitters in exchange for knitting for me because I can't afford to pay them all. And so I was really going deep diving to see if there were some beautiful yarns that I could put. And I did find some more, a few more, a uh, couple of sweaters quantities and some things of yarn. So if you are want to go over and look at my D-Stash page, that'd be great. <laughs> I have yarns to get out of my stash. Hey. Let's do Corey's stories. Ross and I took a quick trip to Sioux Falls. We left at two o'clock on Friday, arrived at six, went out to dinner with my parents, went to bed, got up on Saturday morning, went to brunch and breakfast with my parents and my brother and sister-in-law and their daughter, my niece. So hi, Jeff, Sherry, Taylor, um, who sometimes watch the podcast. I think Jeff always watches. Um, um, I've talked about him before. He's my favorite brother because my other brother doesn't like me very much. We get along, but anyway, middle child, right? And Jeff and I were always close when he was younger. Um, but then I moved away and I'm the only one really in the family that lives away. So I, it has been very hard to stay connected with people over the years. Um, and they don't travel here all that much. And sometimes when people travel to the cities, they have events and activities that they're coming to. So then we wouldn't touch base. So we just needed to get down there. And there was a snowstorm all week last week. And then there was a snowstorm coming overnight and into today. And we had this like little window of time because between here and South Dakota, because I'm in, in middle eastern Minnesota and my parents are in southeastern South Dakota. So it's a four hour drive. Um, there is a ridge line in between there where there's wind, always. It's called Wind of Minnesota, if you're from Minnesota. Um, it's, it's kind of over by Marshall, south of Marshall. There is a big, like, it's almost like a canyon. It's not like the Grand Canyon, but it's like a canyon. And the wind comes down. And so there are thousands of windmills. And so if you leave here, and it's nice, and you it's nice in Sioux Falls, you can still have a blizzard and windham and whiteout conditions. And we saw so many cars in the ditch from the overnight snow on Friday night, and they were towing out, and there was a huge semi that had jackknifed into the ditch. We had good, pretty good roads until we got about an hour from home, and then it started kind of sleeting and snowing again. So it was fine. So we made this like whoosh trip down there back, and I texted my brother and my sisters-in-law and said, hey, can anybody meet us out for breakfast and, you know, before we head and come back? And then I picked up my samples from Prairie Road Yarn. So she opened in November. And if you are in the South Minnesota, uh, Sioux Falls, North, North Western Iowa, um, even Nebraska, it's a lovely yarn store. Um, Jane Taylor opened the yarn store in November and then I had dropped off before Christmas time or right around Christmas time when I was home a bunch of samples for her. So she had my knit words trunk show and she had some of my samples of my patterns that she was displaying and um, and so I needed to pick those up from her. And so I went into the shop and I saw a ton of samples. So I took some video, I took some pictures, so I'm going to put that in for you all to see right here.
yeah, so we had a lovely time. I bought a, a couple skeins of yarn. I was trying really hard not to purchase yarn, but you know, you want to support the local yarn store. And she said it's really been hard. She had a good month in February, but in January and March have been so snowy that no one's coming into the shop because they they've just they've had as much snow there as we've had here. I mean, it just piles up. It's it's incredible how the, the drifts are almost as tall as me in the driveway. We we're, we're going to break the record for snowfall in the winter. Um, and out in California, they've had what, 70 feet of snow. It's incredible. It's just, we have to do something about our climate. Oh. Anyway, I love the snow, but it's just a lot. We had to plan that trip. And um, I had been teaching the last three Saturdays, and then I wanted to go, and Ross has to go to Des Moines this week for a work trip, so he didn't want to go down and back and then go down back down there and so and then we're picking up the puppy and then we're not going to be driving to Sioux Falls for a little while so we just needed to get down there my parents are doing okay they're doing well it's been hard this winter they haven't been able to get out as much and um and, yeah I'm not gonna tell too many stories but oh you know when you sit in your house all day and you look out and your neighbors are clearing your snow and stuff dad's not happy necessarily happy with the job that the guy's doing that comes to do their snow and mom doesn't like the bunnies on the deck who are up eating the bird seed and they're darling they have two bunnies and I said mom name them you gotta name them Ricky and Lucy because Lucy Ball is her favorite and and I and she's like oh that might work and she said but they just poop Corey they poop they poop I said why are you thinking about the poop they're so cute and the snow's covering it up it doesn't matter so you know it just makes me laugh again are you going to let the bad thoughts in your head stick there? Or are you going to try to let the good thoughts, you know, I posted on Instagram this week about if I don't find joy in the snow, there's still going to be snow and I'll have no joy. I got to find joy. You got to find some joy in, in what you're looking at or what, where you're looking at your house or, you know, things that you don't like. You, you got to flip that switch because it's that time of year and people are getting down and, you know, it's long winters and spring is coming. All right, I have one more little Corey story to tell you about. I went to knitting a week ago Thursday and I had a gift card that I had bought at Christmas time. And so I was using up this gift card. Um, it was like a, buy $100 and we eat there every Thursday and then you get $25 free. So I had these two gift cards. So I used my gift card and then I asked the waiter for $20 um, of change to give him a tip in cash. And um, so he brought me back this black folded, you know, what you get your receipts in. I assume that that's true everywhere where you just get the little black folded thing. And I opened it up and it was full of money. He had given me back like $72. It had ones and fives and two twenties and a 10. And I opened it up and I was like, what the heck? I gave him a $20 bill and asked him for change, you know? So I walked over to the bar and he turned and looked at me and he said, I opened it up and I said, this is not mine. And he said, did I give you all my money? And I said, yes, you did. And it was the money that he's given at the beginning of the day to make change and stuff. And honestly, someone could have walked out. He probably would have known but he, there were 10 people at our table that got black folders. It was really, he was like, thank you. He thanked me a hundred times. He was like, thank you so much. Oh my gosh. You know, that was his tip money and his change money. And I, I, I would not have walked off with it. But you know, people make mistakes and then somebody would have walked off with all this money. And I felt so sorry for this kid. I mean, he just seemed so devastated that he would have done that. And I, it wasn't a big deal to me that I was going to give that back because everyone at the table saw me open this thing of money I, right away. You know me? I was like, oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> but I just felt really bad for the kid that, you know, he just looked devastated that he may have had to pay that back to someone or that someone wouldn't have, you know, someone would have kept his money. And I thought, you know, you never know for people and the, the financial stress that they have in their lives and what's going on. It was just that moment. I don't know what I'm even trying to say here. <laughs> I don't have a moral of this story or anything. It's just, you know, people are going through stuff and they might make a mistake, you know, like they might pull in front of you when they're driving or they might have just lost a parent and they, they might just be barely functioning in their day or whatever. And so they might've just gotten a terrible diagnosis 
I don't know. So just have to remember that about people. I only have three audiobooks this week, so that should be quick. I finished the book Apples Never Fall. It was excellent. It's by Leanne Moriarty. And it was the 2021 best audiobook. Mm. So that's that's cool. The Delaney family love one another dearly. It's just that sometimes they want to murder each other. If your mother was missing, would you tell the police, even if the most obvious suspect was your father? This is de the dilemma facing the four grown Delaney siblings. This book was so surprising. I loved reading about the whole family dynamic, brothers and sisters, how they got along, how they didn't get along, who what played what roles in the family. And the entire time they're looking for the mother and the father knows everyone thinks that he did it and he can't prove that he didn't. He's got scratches on his face. Um, it was so good. It, I just really enjoyed it. I like Leanne Moriarty, and this was 18 hours long. It was a doozy. I did listen to it quite quickly, but it, it was really good. So highly recommend. Then I went over and finished Spinning in Her Grave by Molly McRae. And I think that was the second one or the, th no, it's the third one in the Haunted Yarn Shop Mystery. So this is the yarn shop that has the little ghost that talks, the, the girl that's the ghost that talks to the owner after her aunt or grandmother who owns the yarn shop passes away and then she inherits the yarn shop. Um, they're okay. They're, they're a little light. Um, it's, you know, it's a small town yarn shop. Everybody knows everything and then a murder happens and then they have to solve the murder. I, I like listening. They're, they're pretty well done. Um, it was nine hours. She does a good job of character development. I've talked about that before. But so, yeah, I would I would recommend uh, Spinning in Her Grave. And then the last one I read, I, I read this and then I watched that women talking and they were kind of both sad kind of downers. And I thought, oh, this is, these are hard to do back to back when something is kind of hits you in the gut, right? This is called Valentine by Elizabeth Wetmore. And I think it's a debut novel. And this was a Jenna of the Today Show pick, book pick, which is why I picked it up. Um, Mercy is as hard in a place like, Mercy is hard in a place like this. It's February, 1976, and Odessa, Texas stands on the cusp of the next great oil boom. While the town's men embrace the coming prosperity, its women intimately know and fear the violence that always seems to follow. 14-year-old Gloria Ramirez appears on the front porch of Mary Rose Whitehead's ranch house, broken and barely alive. The teenager had been viciously attacked in a nearby oil field, an act of brutality that is tried in the churches and barrooms of Odessa before it can reach a court of law. When justice is evasive, the stage is set for a showdown. This isn't as horrific as it sounds. I knew that this girl was going to show up on this front door of this ranch and that the woman was going to call the police and welcome her in. Um, but then this becomes a story of the woman and her children who do not feel safe living near the oil fields any longer. So they move to town. They move into a neighborhood and there's a quirky little girl in the neighborhood and she has bef befriended someone I won't give too much away and her mother is has left she and her father and her father works every day so he's gone and so she's left to her own devices and then they move in across the street and then there's a woman whose husband has passed and she's grieving and struggling to get by and these neighbors all meet so it it becomes a dramatic story and it's not just all about the criminal part of that beginning part of the book. So yeah, pretty good. I, I thought it was good. Well, very well written um, and not difficult to read, but anyway, it's called Valentine. So those are the three books that I read and now I'm listening to The Goldfinch by Donna Chart, which is 32 hours, which is why I don't have another book this week. Couldn't decide. I That has been on my to be red list, my TBR, as they say, for a long time. And because it was such a long book, I kept saying, 
I'm just not gonna listen, it's too long. And it won the Pulitzer Prize, so I always keep thinking I should listen to it. But the bottom line is, I'm gonna listen to an audiobook anyway. So I'm gonna listen to a 10 hour and an eight hour and a 12 hour, and that's gonna equal the 32 hours anyway, so why don't I just listen? So I just decided to start listening, and I, I am enjoying it, it's good so far. Um, I'm five or six or seven hours in, um, and I am liking the story, and I don't feel like it's dragging on. I know that there were mixed reviews from people on whether or not it was a great book or not. Um, but yeah, so I'm listening to that one right now. Okay, I have added a couple of teaching gigs to my schedule. So my Stephen B. class um, on Latvian braids got moved to April 2nd because I'm going to pick up my puppy and they didn't have any sign up. And so we moved it a week later. So that's April 2nd from 12 to 3 if you're local. And then I'm going to the Interweave Yarn Fest in Colorado in April. And there are still openings in four out of five of my classes. One of my classes is full. That is a great show. And it is not too late to sign up. Um, if you are at all interested in going to Loveland, Colorado, meeting up with me, um, we could have tacos for lunch. Shana, I'm talking to you. I don't know if she watches, but I will see Shana probably again. And then I added a class, my Fixing Mistakes class. It's called When Knitting Goes Wrong, but it's basically Fixing Mistakes. It's becoming one of my most popular classes. And I'm going to teach that at Darn It Anyway in Stillwater on April 21st. So if I've got people in the eastern part of the Twin Cities or the western part of Wisconsin, I'll be teaching my Fixing Mistakes class. And then I'm doing my Skeins to Skeins event at Stephen B. So I've got um, Stephen B, Interweave Yarn Fest, Darn It Anyway in Stillwater, Stephen B, and then um, the Knitter's Guild in the fall because then I will be stopping teaching for a little while while I get my shoulder fixed, which I gotta get that done because I couldn't fall asleep last night and get comfortable because that darn shoulder was killing me because I knit for four hours in the car on Sven and Solvay to get them done. And then my shoulder was just not happy because in the car, you know, wasn't a very comfortable position. That was kind of silly. One last thing, I saw this sandwich on Instagram and so I'm gonna share it. You take turkey deli meat sliced and you lay it on a, a cutting board and you put on onion on top, tomato, lettuce, mayo, mustard, Swiss cheese, pepperoncinis, you just stack all this stuff up. And then you take a big knife and you chop it and you make a chopped sandwich instead of a chopped salad, which was like brilliant to me so you just chop it all up into smaller, like a, like a, almost like a dice. Everything's kind of diced. And then you kind of form it in a, in a loaf on a piece of parchment paper or whatever, or on the cutting board. And then you take a hoagie roll and you lay it over the top and you kind of scoop that all into it. And he rolled it up into a piece of parchment paper real tight and then sliced it in half and showed it. I'm going to try to show you the picture. I'll just put the picture in here. I'll put the picture in while I'm talking. So this is by Boyd Benson 3 on Instagram, who does a bunch of food. And he saw ate this sandwich at the farmer in the deli in Brooklyn, New York. And so he was making it at home. And there's a video of watching him make it. If you want to go over to Instagram and watch Boyd Benson 3 make this sandwich. But I'm going to make this for lunch one day this week for Ross and I. We're just going to chop up turkey and cheese, whatever you want, mayo, mustard, peppers, Russ won't eat the peppers, but, um, or the onion. Actually, probably Ross won't eat it. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, he would eat it. If I only put the, the stuff that I like on one end and his stuff on the other end, then we can just get a I have not found a bread that I like. Ross has bought me three different gluten-free breads and they're all terrible. So I will probably eat mine on butter lettuce. Although I had pancakes yesterday with my brother. It just was like, oh, we went out for brunch and I was like, I'll have eggs and bacon, but I'm having pancakes. 
And I didn't have any adverse effects from having, you know, pancakes once. I've been doing pretty well eating gluten-free mostly, but um, I may just have to have a piece of bread or a hoagie roll with this sandwich this week for lunch. I made that um, chicken salad with the ramen noodles and the toasted almonds, and you can put any types of seeds or nuts in it, and then you make your dressing. I've shared it on the podcast, so I'm sure it's in the recipes thread. On Ravelry, boy, the wind just started to blow out there. Um, I can hear it. Um, that's why I was looking out the window. Um, but yeah, I made that salad, and Ross didn't want me to make it because you chop up cabbage. It's a lot of cabbage. You you chop cabbage and then chicken breast and the ramen noodles. You break them all up, and then you mix the dressing up. And you um, and so I made this big tub of it, and I said I'm just going to eat it for lunch every day this week. And then he was like well, I might try some of that. I was like, you didn't, I've offered to make this several times. And he's like, well, now that I see it, it looks pretty good. So we both ate that ramen chicken salad this week, which was lovely. It was really good. Yeah, very good. We had it several days and uh, we didn't put the dressing on until we went to eat it. And then we just shook it on there. Yeah, it was good. It's a, it's an oil and vinegar, a little bit of sugar. You could use honey. Um, and then the packet, the seasoning packet from the ramen. Yeah, so that's what it was. I get gluten-free ramen um, from a gluten-free shop. There's a gluten-free shop in New York City that carries a lot of the stuff that I can't find. And they ship it out. And they've called me twice because they've been out of product. So it's it's hard to get the stuff that you want sometimes. But anyway, there are, there are different options for everybody. Two more things. Look at the cute bag my daughter bought me oh my gosh you know the book extra yarn right look at she's got on an orange knit coat with a dog Kylie said I saw it and you had to have it this was from Barnes and Noble I called around the Twin Cities to see if there were any more because I would give them away because I think it was only a dollar 99 for the bag it's really cute it's just one of those but I, they, there were none available online or at the local bookstores. So you could check your local Barnes & Noble to see if they had any. Oh my goodness, so cute. So I got that. And then I also purchased my rolling backpack handle broke. And it doesn't stay up. And I can still use it, but when we travel, it's going to be a pain. So I got myself a new one. And instead of getting a backpack, I got a bucket. Now, I don't know if I'm going to like this, but see, it's got the rollers here. And then it's got the handle back here. It's got the telescoping handle back there. And then they had tons of patterns, tons of different patterns. So I got the one, of course, that had fruits and birds with oranges. They had some really cute patterns. It's quite deep. I don't know that will fit underneath a seat like my backpack one would, but I'll just put it in the overhead bin. And when we go to get the puppy, I think it'll be my overnight bag or my knitting bag for in the car. It was a little pricey, but not terrible. I want to say 50, 50 something. So not, I don't know. I thought when it came, if, if it's too big, I'll send it back. But so far... I think it'll be okay. It's, it's quite deep. It's like a big knitting bag, tote bag with wheels, which I was thinking when I go to Colorado and I go from my hotel room down to my classroom, I am always carrying all my handouts and all my samples or my stuff. And so sometimes I've got a suitcase, my purse and whatever. So I was thinking this might also be nice with my bad shoulder. I'm looking at ways to help myself not lift things with my red right hand. That's the bottom line with the right hand. So I thought, okay, I'll share it with you all. So it was on Amazon. I'll put the link in the show notes. I think that's all I have. It hasn't been quite as long this week. I think my energy went up and down. So I apologize for that because I think I was, I just, I might be coming down with a tiny bit of a cold here because we went to Minnesota and came, or went to South Dakota and came back. Come in for your hug. Uh, hug all of you. I'm deciding maybe that I won't do all of my little comments at the end of every podcast. 
it takes a lot to edit it in. And, um, and then I put all the pictures in every time and I've been doing it for a while. So until next time, keep it colorful. Bye y'all. Thank you.